The vehicle you see right behind me, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at is the all new, brand new GMC Yukon Denali Ultimate. And we're gonna go ahead and check out its technology and see what it has to offer for its ridiculous, well, yeah, expensive asking price. As this SUV can actually price at around $100,000. This one in particular, this one's about $98,000, which is a lot for an SUV. So let's go ahead and check it out and see what it has to offer. So first thing first, this Ultimate Denali has like a nice smoke effect. As you see where the chrome grill was supposed to be, it's actually smoked. And the GMC logo actually illuminates at night as well. You do have the standard features as in like fog lamps on the bottom, nice beefy all season tires, Bridgestones, and 20 inch wheels, which this design is typically usually exclusive to the Denali. You do have automatic side steps as you approach the vehicle. This does automatically go down. And all four door handles are smart door handles, which means you can unlock or lock the vehicle from any door handle you're using. Roof rails, of course, are standard. And the technology that this car has is 360 cameras from all the way around, which makes parking this large size SUV easy. And this is indeed a three row SUV. Now it does have other amazing features such as the capability to freely open up the trunk, the cargo hatch by simply just putting your foot over here and it will automatically open up. And at night, there's a GMC logo that actually illuminates on the bottom right here, making it easier to see which area is the sensor for this automatic lift gate. And the cargo space with seats up, are the numbers are right here. But if you need to fold these rear third rows seats down, you do have buttons right here you could press. And it'll automatically bring them down and you can also bring them back up as well. And if you absolutely have to, you could also bring down the second row seat as well, which buttons are right here. And you can press again to fold them all the way flush like so. Uh, that one, I have passenger seats all the way back, so it's hitting it, but if I reclined it more, you'll be able to clear it just like the first uh, seat you see right here. Only con to these seats is they don't automatically fold back down. Once these second row seats are folded, you have to manually go and grab them and put them back up. Now let's take a look at the drivetrain that powers this SUV. So there's two drivetrain options, two wheel drive or four x four. The one you see here is indeed the four x four version. This is a 6.2 liter V8 that puts out 420 horsepower and there is a diesel version which puts in 277 horsepower, but both of them do have 460 pound-feet of torque. The average MPG for my driving experience is about 17 miles per gallon. My best one was indeed 19 miles per gallon on the long commute. But yeah, this is definitely a massive V8 and still has plenty of room for upgrades and stuff like that if you want to. Now on cameras, it does look like the DRLs are flickering, but it doesn't look like that in real life. It has something to do with the FPS rate that the camera that's shooting at. But all the important numbers and facts about this large size SUV are listed right there. So you can take a closer look. Now this Denali does have airbag suspension, so it's right on airbags, air suspension, which is super comfortable and definitely can go up really high if you wanna go off-roading. As I'll go ahead and show you a demonstration right here. But this is the standard low ride height and I can fit like my fist in here. Let's go ahead and raise it up. There's this and now I can fit like three fists in here if I really want to. So it makes a massive difference. I'll give you the best ground clearance when possible when going towards rough terrain roads. And just like any Yukon, this part right here is removable which will unveil a tow hitch. So yes, it can indeed tow. Now let's go ahead and hop in the Yukon Ultimate. And first thing first, when you first get in here, it smells like leather, like the good kind. It smells really good in here. But the interior itself, it's mixture with this black and like this brown leather with wood grain on the dash and trim pieces. It looks really nice and feels really nice because the texture on the wood actually is nice. And there's cool little Easter eggs here. As you can see the coordinates right here to the Yukon. But if we go ahead and turn on the car to start, you have your gear shifters right here. There is a heads up display right here. 
and this does have super cruise too which i'll talk more in a little bit i have it on four load which is why i was giving us that message let me go ahead and reverse back to auto should have traction control back go ahead and put it back to neutral i had to do this to raise the vehicle all the way back to its maximum height but in its regular drive modes if we go on the height suspension you have access to uh these three so like low medium high and extra high but that's only for going off-roading which requires you to put in four by four low and then other unique aspect of technology side of things uh you do have this flip mirror which is pretty much spread around the gm lineup for general motors chevy has this but this one indeed has this you do have this massive panoramic sunroof which this section opens up and then the slider can go all the way far all the way to the very back giving your passengers this nice view of the, of the sky and the headrests they do have both as this vehicle does have an 18 speakers audio system and here you do have the important stuff so like cover the center piece right here if you like to or unveil the cup holders or everything else because this car does have wireless charging usb a usb c and a 12 volt outlet right there of course you have your ac controls right here and this infotainment screen is indeed Android because if we go on navigation, it's using Android. And then this armrest does have a secret component which you can have access to it right here. You can actually slide this section all the way in the back to give your passengers cup holders. But here you can actually store stuff here or flat out this additional storage compartment. Because in the center, this is how much space you have. Not that much space for a full size SUV like this. But it's pretty unique that they actually like be used in different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this back in. The glove box. Very standard. Now you do have on-demand buttons right here. Like your 360 camera. You could press right here to on-demandly just turn it on. You also have the automatic parking assist. Engine start. Lane keep assist right here. Parking assist. Decline hill assist. Traction control and your e-brakes right here as well as your 4x4 options the different modes your headlight control trailer controls and it is indeed an automatic steering wheel adjuster and right here is the camera for the super cruise because this car does indeed have it i'll talk more about how it works but in a little bit but that's actually really nice and works pretty well and of course you have your standard buttons right here and the volume there's no paddle shifts on there but they're located in the back here your volume buttons are right here and this button over here will be your section to like skip track or go back to previously listened track and your many different modes right here you can see the best mpg i average for mpg right here because i was driving rough earlier but on average we are gaining close to like 19 miles per gallon and you have all these different modes to select from and this is actually one of the few cars that will actually show you your uh your brake pad life right here but then of course you have your navigation, your cell phones, and other controller information. It's fairly customizable. Now the infotainment screen is using Android, so you do have Android maps, which you could import the address right here. But it's pretty standard to the most part compared to other like manufacturer like screen dedication. You do have this trailer section right here dedicated for uh, when tolling. And of course you have your virtual voice assistant that is powered by Google. But we tap home, there is some interesting settings to adjust. Like this vehicle does have rear entertainment. So you as the driver and passenger, you have all cap you have the capability to override anything over there. So if you like to lock the screens, you could totally do so. But you can actually turn on the screens from here and also select the source for the rear passengers from this section. And you do have access to HDMIs, YouTube, or even Hulu. Of course, you do have vehicle hotspot, but in the settings section, there's a lot of new settings I haven't seen any other cars have, such as if we go in vehicle, you can actually enable buckle to drive, which will force you to buckle your seat in order for you to select a drive gear selection. I personally prefer leaving that off, but you do have rear seat reminder, which you could turn off. Super Cruise lane change. You could actually allow the Super Cruise to automatically lane change for you. So if there's a slow moving vehicle, it will actually automatically pass that vehicle and go back to the non-passing lane if you're not passing. And we'll do the same thing if there's a vehicle in the passing lane going slow. It will just like, it'll, you'll literally be passed by a bot. But this is really cool. You can let it do it automatically or you can actually signal yourself or have it turned off. Automatic works fine with me. Now let's go ahead and hop into the back seats. 
Not a back seat, it's extremely roomy back here. Of course, since this is a three row SUV, we do have plenty of space. I have a lot of headroom, head space, a lot of leg space too. And these seats, you can actually slide in or forward. So they are fully adjustable. But switching cameras, we do have an infotainment screen back here for the rear passengers located right behind the headrests on the driver and passenger side. And you do have access to YouTube, Hulu, and the additional settings as well. And you do have two HDMI ports, which are located right here. And right here, you do have access to a household outlet. So you can actually plug in like a gaming console and literally plug it in right here via HDMI and view it right here on the big screen. Of course, you do have climate control located back here for your rear passengers as well. And cubbies back here. And then in the heat leather seats, you can also see more of those Yukon trails right here embedded in the leather seats, which look really awesome and phenomenal. You do have window control switches with your locks and more of those Bose speakers locations right here in the back. Air vents are right here for your rear passengers. They can open it or close it or reposition it however they like. Co hanger. And then, of course, this amazing view of the sunroof. But that's enough of here. Let's go ahead and go to the back. And in the back here, yeah, I actually do have leg room. Yeah, it's still kind of tight. But, I mean, like, I could always just do this or lay my legs sideways. It's not bad. The hump that we're used to from previous generation Yukons, it's more even out. It's spread out over there, which gives the third row even more additional leg space. And you do have cup holders, a USB-C port right here. And this soft padding right here for your arm. And of course, seat belts, which the third row is actually located right here. So this Yukon can actually sit up to seven people or eight if you actually ditch the captain seats for the second row. And if I need to override this seat right here, there's this button right here that gives me access to uh, the quick release and easier for me to get out in and out. And it actually feels like a limo like this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically all the cool things that this Yukon ultimate denali has to offer it's not a bad car honestly it definitely gives me like a father vibe when i'm driving this thing so just keep that in mind so in other words it's definitely good for a family hauler especially if you're not a huge fan of minivans this is a nice family vehicle now if you wish to watch more i've actually reviewed a couple other similar size suvs one of which is the explorer as well as the aviator which you can go ahead and watch right over there for the explorer and an aviator lincoln a aviator is right over there aside from that thanks so much for watching take care and i'll catch you guys in the next one see ya